Hello everyone, how are we all? Hang on, I'm just getting our camera into a slightly better position. I think we're all right today. All right, hello, welcome. Um, I don't know what day it is. Wednesday? Thursday. Feels like Thursday. Must be Thursday. Happy Thursday. It's been one of those weeks. Um, bit of an impromptu live, but I'm working on this little cabinet for a client um, and I thought, is it Thursday? Throwing me out now. It is Thursday, isn't it? Because, tom yeah, tomorrow's Friday. My son's got footy colours day at school tomorrow. It must be, God, I hope it's Thursday. Um, anyway, I'm working on this cupboard for a client, um, and I'm up to sealing it because it's going into a kitchen, so we're going to seal it with pure eco matte finish, which I'll show you in a second. And... It's very quiet and I was just going to put a show on and I thought, no, I like the sound of my own voice. So here we are. Uh, it's been one of those weeks. Let me tell you what's been happening while we do this in the background. So this piece was a, um, it's an Ikea uh, cabinet, I think it's either range. It's the same as our shelves. Let me turn you around. It's part of, oops, hang on, not that shelf. These shelves, it's part of that collection. So it's all pine. Um, it always has really, oh, sorry, really nice green, but it is very yellow, can throw a lot of orange. Um, it does, it always has really big knots in it. It's a beautiful, it's always a beautiful range, but um, this one is going into a kitchen. Uh, they're renovating their house. And they wanted a bit of timber, but they didn't want the orange. They didn't want to really dull it with a darker colour, so we chose a paintwash. Just to tone it back a little bit, but still be quite bright. Um, and still have that little bit of warmth that timber gives the space. So there's like the main kitchen, and it's sort of at the end of the kitchen, and it's going to be like a little coffee um, coffee nook sort of thing, like your toaster and your kettle and that sort of thing. So... It's just a little cabinet. It does have some doors which are just behind us. Let me show you the doors. There are the doors there. Um, and all I've done so far, we tried a coat of Purico Stain and Glaze in the colour Whisper, which is the white, but it wasn't enough for this. This is These are very, very orange. It did make a difference, but it just wasn't enough. And the client really wanted more of a paint wash look which you can achieve with a stain and glaze but you're looking at quite a few coats so instead we just went in straight with a paint wash and i actually use where's my jar the custom color that we made the other day in this old fossil jar for sorry <laughs> it's easier if i show you in case you're not keeping up that we use for this dress uh, this one the dresser in the back there um so I had, I've still got some of that left. So I'm like, well, I think it's a perfect colour for what they're after. It's not too white because we don't didn't want it super, super white. Um, but it's been, it's beautiful. So I did one coat. I mixed my paint wash the same as what we were doing the other day to do the top of that dresser. And then the other week when we did that TV unit. So paint wash, about 50-50 paint slash water. Super easy. Did that yesterday and now... Um, the client's super happy. She loves where it's at. So now today we're going to seal it. Uh, normally I would use a hemp oil or I would use a wax. But because this is going into a kitchen, even though it's like not right near where all the cooking's happening, it's still in a kitchen. Uh, so we want to give it a bit more protection. We also want to make it that little bit more scrubbable because we know what kitchens can be like. They get pretty greasy, pretty dirty. Um, so we just want to make sure, and this is going into a home that's going to be sold. So um, we just want to make sure that it's like whoever ends up owning it can scrub it down really well if it ever gets something on it. And we just want to give it some more protection. So we're using Pure Eco Matte Finish today, which is this one here. I've got a little jar, which is plenty for what we're doing. Always give it a really good shake. It does tend to separate a little bit. These are a water-based top coat. They're a polyurethane. Um, they're a water-based polyurethane. Very, very hardy. Exterior grade. We're using matte. 
uh, because we want it sort of matching the kitchen, which is all matte as well. Um, but it also comes in a satin and a gloss as well. And I do have some in stock. For a change, I've got some in stock. Oh, I think that's what I forgot to add to my links. Hang on, can I see my links? I did. I forgot to add it to the links at the bottom of the um, page there that you can see. But it is on the website and it is in stock. So matte, satin and gloss. They come in the 250ml jars, which are the perfect size for our sponges to fit in, or they come in the 600ml as well. Make sure you pick yourself up a sponge. We also have those back in stock. We're doing well. We've got a lot out of stock still, but we're catching up. <laughs> we're playing catch up. Um, sponge, slightly damp, and your top coat. Give it a really good shake as always. Now, before we put that on though, with Timber, we know that when we stain it um, or put sort of any sort of coating on it, it can get a little bit rough. It can feel a little bit furry, which is very, very normal. It's the timber's natural reaction to getting wet. So before we seal it, because when we put our sealer on, we then can't like, we can't touch it while it's wet. Normally when we do our oil, we put our oil on and we sand it when the oil's on there and still wet before it starts to dry. We can't do that with a top coat. A top coat, once it's on, you gotta leave it alone and let it dry. So, we are going to sand it first. I've just got uh, 1,200 grit, so nice and fine uh, sandpaper here. Now these are also, we're doing well, on the website. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but <laughs> we're doing very well in this video for a change. I've, uh, as, as you all know, we moved in a couple of months ago and it's been a little bit tight, so we've been a bit slower than normal restocking. We're normally really, really good, and I like to have full shelves all the time. But financially, we just haven't been able to do it. So um, it's nice when everything's in stock. I'm gonna grab yourself off a piece of sandpaper. These are one meter lengths, um, 1,200 grit. So this is your finishing sandpaper. This is what you're using with your hemp oil or your wax when you're doing your wet sanding, okay? So you just need, a little bit, you don't need a lot. And all I'm gonna do, and I should have done some of this on camera, so I apologize, this is just going to stretch out the length of our video a little bit. But all you're gonna do, really, really like, and now this is, just so you're aware, <laughs> cause somebody will bring it up. It's screwed together there and there, but not there and there. I had to take it apart to get the backing board out of it. And, um, and then I took the doors off as well so it's sort of half put together at the moment it's not oh it's pretty good actually it's pretty stable still but it is half put together and somebody will bring that up so just so you know i know i'm aware <laughs> so all you're gonna do is just a really light sand it only has to be for a few seconds and we're just knocking back any of those fibers of your piece of your timber after you stain like so that's literally all you're doing have a feel of it. If there's any bits that are still a little bit rough, go over them again. But it's just enough that when you put your top coat down, when that top coat dries, it'll be so much smoother. And we're gonna do two coats of top coat. Um, it'll be so much smoother and we'll do a white sand in between coats as well. You don't sand after your final coat um, because you can scratch it up and that sort of defeats the purpose. So. We'll do a light sand now. We'll do one between coats, but not after the last coat. Uh, but it's just enough just to knock those fibers back and give you a really soft, smooth finish. Otherwise, you might find that it feels a little bit rough and we don't want it feeling, we don't want it feeling rough. Um, we don't want, and you'll notice the difference as well. So we don't want that feeling. This must be a good time to be live because there's so many of you on, which is lovely to see. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm normally lucky if there's like one or two people watching while I'm live. We tend to get all our views afterwards. So really, really lightly all over. This is the, this is upside down. This is the bottom side, but you will see it because it's up on a wall. That's the top. We will give that a light scent and a coat as well, but you're not gonna see it as much. Light sand all over. I'm not super, like, I'm not really fussy with this. It's just enough to help our paint, uh, sorry, to help everything just feel nice. It's just like one of those nice little finishing touches. I 
I like to do these edges because they are quite, I always find they tend to stand up a bit more than other areas. They get a bit rougher. Do this other side. TV unit today for the same client actually, um, but we've put off that for the moment. She's still trying to decide what she wants to do, so we're not doing that anymore. So I'm just getting this done for her. She's picking this up tomorrow, so getting this done, and then what are we doing? I've got like a lot, like we've had a lot of furniture coming in, so um, I've got quite a few pieces that just need to be cleaned few very minor fixes staged and then out they go sort of thing. Um, we're not doing, like I've got a few projects, like when I sanded, what did I sand the other day? I sanded something. What was I sanding? Oh, the top of the dresser. When I did that the other day. I'm just gonna wipe it down with just a baby wipe. Oops. Just enough. To grab some of that dust. I've also got a tack cloth as well, so we'll wipe that over in a second. Just want to get most of that dust off it. Um, yeah, when I sanded the dresser the other day, so I've got another couple of pieces almost ready to go. So we'll do a few more videos on that. I'm actually going to show this paint wash on another little dresser as well that I've got. It's absolutely beautiful, and um, it needs to stay this really nice light colour. Oops. So we're going to be doing that as well. I'm just going to, they are actually, what do I want to grab? Hang on. I just want to pop it up on something a little bit. Oh, this will do. This will do. It's a leftover timber. Pop that under there. Just so it's like up off the table a little bit. Hang on. That's a bit. We know what I'm like. That's a little bit unsteady. You'll do the job. Hang on. The untangler of everything. Oh my gosh. I don't want the plug, but oh no, the plug on does. <laughs> I'm standing over here trying to untangle it. I don't need to. This is the base. My husband runs an eBay business. In case you're wondering what we're using today, this is an iRobot Brava Brava <laughs> Turbo Charge Cradle. Um, it had a US plug on it, so it's useless to me, but we get some interesting stuff here. We've been getting a lot of Maybe not. We've been getting out a lot of stuff from the US. Uh, like with US plugs on it, which is a bit unusual. Actually, we're gonna, hang on. Just wanna like rearrange my items here. I'll just gonna put that there at the back and bring my piece of wood forward. There we go, that's better. Just gonna sand along that front bit a bit more. Um, yeah, we've been getting out a lot of stuff with like US plugs lately, which is odd. Every now and then we do, but it's been a lot more than usual. We um have ourselves some thieves on uh, Tuesday night at about five o'clock in the evening. And I was here Tuesday. We had a live Tuesday. I was here until about 4.30. Um, and they, they would have showed up just after I left. And they were here for over an hour. My, my husband's got... um in big cages just outside the shed it's all rubbish like it's it's stuff that's on its way to the scrapyard he's about to take to a scrapyard i've just got myself some tack cloth i haven't used this in ages can i i don't want to use all of it yeah i don't know if i've got any scissors in here they might use the whole thing this is just like a um it's like a sticky cloth i don't even know where i got mine from Oh, mine's a Brewers one, which is a wallpaper brand. I think I might have got this from my wallpaper supplier, actually. It's just like a sticky cloth, and it's really great for grabbing dust. So it's perfect for before your top coat. And you just wipe it down like you do a cloth. 
And it's just going to grab any dust that's on that surface and make sure that there's none, there's none there because you will see that dust as you go. Um, and you just reuse it, just chuck it in a Ziploc bag. It's pretty, they're fantastic. I might actually, um, I can actually get them for stock as well. So if it's something that you're interested in me getting, I can get them in. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so we had some thieves Tuesday night. They were here for over an hour going through my husband's bins. Like, and it's just scrap. Like, it's, it's stuff that's on its way to the scrapyard. Nothing of value. There's real, like, really, everything's broken anyway, even inside the shed. So, there's not, not a lot of value here to begin with. And it was really random, the stuff that they're taking. Like, yeah, there was a few bits of, like, aluminium and metals and that sort of thing that weren't attached to anything. But then they took, like, they took a washing machine that was very clearly broken. Um, they took, like, a couple of vacuum cleaners. They took an old projector screen, like, the ones that are, ooh, that are on the stand. There was, like, an old bassinet, the fold-up bassinets. Uh, like, it was really random stuff. Um, so that was my, our Wednesday morning was on the phone with the police for like two hours going through it. Um, and then today I've sat down, they, it was, the plates on the car are for a different colour version of the car. So not for what they showed up in. Um, so that was quite interesting as well. So the police are, they're quite interested in these two. And... And it was an elderly couple. It wasn't, we thought, oh, yeah, well, maybe they were young. No, these guys were probably 60s, if not older. He had a massive long white beard. Uh, they were very, very visible on the camera. We've got very good identification. Um, we've also got number plates. And their trailer was very identifiable. It wasn't your stock standard. Um, so, yes, that was our Tuesday. So, at the moment, my computer's sitting there uploading all the footage to the police because an hour of footage is like 10 gigabyte. It's massive. Um, Sidetracked. <laughs> Sponge, dip it in, see how it fits in the jar perfectly. That is too much. If you're putting that much on, it's just going to be a thick, gloopy mess. You want that. Oh, sorry, the sun's on that. See how it's just like a really, really light coating? You don't want to be putting too much on. I'm going to do the inside first and then I'll do the outside just because I tend to touch it. And all you're going to do, you're going to wipe it on like you wipe down your kitchen table. But once it's on there, the key is not to keep touching it. Have your sponge a little bit damp as well. Um, so, yes, these people, like, and it was... Five, yeah, five o'clock in the afternoon. The sun was still up. Yes, we're down the back, but it was just, it was a little bit brazen, I think. I just, we knew eventually, and we've had a few people that come for a little sticky beak, and I'm sure a few little things have gone missing, but not the extent that they took. Um, it, like, these cages, they're, well, they're up to, like, my shoulder. These are big they're like meter by meter and they're up to my shoulder and I'm what am I I'm 153 centimeters so they're like almost almost one and a half meters tall they're quite big there was a lot of stuff in there and they're only out this one cage that they half empty was only out because we had to shuffle the shed to get a trailer in there um <laughs> we literally just pulled it out that afternoon as well and Joe had rocked up Wednesday morning with the um, with the other trailer so he could do a scrap load, take all of that to the scrap yard, which he's done today instead. But just the balls on some people, I tell you. Come over here, see what, see what I'm doing while I'm having a chat. I've been waiting for this live so I can tell you all what's happening. So we're just, you're literally just wiping it off like there's really nothing to this. You want a nice thin coat. You shouldn't really, other than seeing like it's wet, you shouldn't be seeing, really seeing it on the surface at all. 
and you're just gonna wipe it on and then you're gonna leave it alone and we're gonna do two coats and this will dry really really fast as well because it's such a thin coat um, it will dry really really quickly but you just want two coats Sometimes you can do a third if you really want to, but your first coat gets most of it. This is what I always say. First coat gets most of it, second coat gets the rest. Um, and I find that's like a nice, even balance. So I like that's probably fine, but you're gonna spread that out as well. Any more than that on your cloth is definitely too much. So you're just gonna spread it out like so. Like that, and then I'm actually going to, just for a second, I'm going to flip it up because I want to do a coat on this side before I do the outside. So I'm just going to, oops, something, oops, like that for a second. Hang on, which side am I doing? This side. <laughs> doing this side. <laughs> Threw myself off then. Just like that. I don't think you guys can even see where it's sort of being applied, but you're literally just wiping the top coat on. It's really, really easy to apply. And this sort of goes like this application is super easy, and most water based top coats, the application is pretty much the same. Um, I always use a sponge, unless I've got like a lot of detail. I generally use a sponge simply because it's easier and it stops you from putting it on too thick. When you use a brush, and have a go, but when you use a brush, you'll find that you're putting your top coat on um, a lot thicker and we don't want it that thick. Nice thin coats is all you need. Nice even thin coats. Um, so I always, yeah, I like to use a sponge these sponges are on my website. You can use whatever you've got going. Um, Chuck's cloths, I've used them in the past. They're fine as well. Um, just use whatever you've got. Right, inside done. Um, now, that's the top. So we're gonna flip it up this way. I'm going to top coat that later. So we're gonna get the rest done. And then once all this is dry, we'll do that bit um there's like there's no easy way to do this this is like leaving it together and doing it like this is the best oh my gosh it's actually heavier than i think it is too um this is sort of the easiest way to go about this hang on which side are we on we're on that side i still okay, hang on. are we yes <laughs> we're not doing well are we so dipping it in just a little bit and we're just going to wipe it across the top. So you can go in any direction you like as well. You're not going to notice. It will self-level to an extent, but because we're applying it nice and thinly, you're also not really going to notice. Um, like It's not leaving brush strokes. So you can put it on any way you like. For those of you who are a little bit fancy... You can use a spray gun as well or and a roller as well. Um, you don't have to use a sponge. I just prefer to use a sponge. I have sprayed in the past, but spraying is just not for me. It sort of takes takes away the hands-on approach. Oops. Oops. Take, yeah, it takes away the hands-on approach for me. So I do like to do it like this. It just... I don't know. There's just something about doing it by hand versus using the machine for it. The only thing I like to use a spray gun for is when I'm painting walls in the house. <laughs> I am not a wall painter at all. I just can't get the right rhythm with a roller. So spraying that out. Don't touch it too much. I'm already starting to touch that a little bit much then. So you just want to get it on there and then leave it alone. Now, little does go a long way. I find you don't quite get as much coverage with um, 
with a top coat as what you would say an oil or a wax. I find that I don't quite get as much. Um, it's still pretty good, but it's definitely not as good as a, um, what was I saying? As, as a wax or a oil. So it's, um, does it say on these jars? Is it 13 square meters or 10 square meters? I don't think it says on here anymore. I think I used to say. No, it doesn't say. Um, it's like 10 or 13 square meters. It's somewhere like that per liter. Um, so a small jar. Um, you'll easily get a set of bedsides out of. Um, if you're applying it thinly, you will get something like a... Come around here, see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, if you're applying nice and thin, you will get... Oh, move that out of the room. You will get like a sideboard just out of a 250 mil. But you will, I find, I find I definitely use, even though it's a nice thin coat, I definitely do use more than what I do of an oil. So just like so. Then we're going to leave this to dry. Uh, and I'll come back and do a next, the next coat. Um, it's super, super easy as you can see. Um, I've got to do the doors too actually, so you guys can join me for that as well if you like. And then we're just going to sort of wait half an hour-ish in between. It's quite warm in here at the moment, so it's not going to take long to dry. First coat's done. I've just got to do the underside, uh, which is actually the top. But as I said, I will... Um, I'll wait for this to all dry before I do that. But that's it, super easy. So that's Pure Eco Matte Finish. It's a water-based polyurethane. If you've got questions, let me know. I haven't linked it below. I have, however, um, and I will continue to link my YouTube below as well. So go check that out. And I'm going to make sure all these videos are up. I'm slowly getting them up, but it takes time. Um, that's it, I've got stuff all over my hands now. So I wanna like put my hands on my hips and I can't. Um, oh, bye everyone. Have a lovely afternoon. And I doubt, no, I'm not going to see you tomorrow. I'll see you next week. Bye everyone.